Welcome to another awesome video. This Cambridge Soundworks subwoofer is my subwoofer of choice, but unfortunately due to its large bulky size uh, and the lack of wife approval factor, we switched to this, the TSS 450 from Infinity, which fits under a table, but it broke the other day. No, no. No signal, just pops and crackles. We're gonna turn on the... Just get a crackling noise. So we can enjoy movies like Jurassic Park with the stomp of the uh, uh, T-Rex without subwoofer. I thought, well, why not try to fix it? And I was reading online and I just Googled it. It's a pretty old subwoofer. And I've got an older subwoofer and older equipment, obviously, that I show on this channel that works. But this guy online said there's a limiter circuit that was causing a problem. This problem, it, his problem description was the same. And he said you could bypass the circuit. So I thought I'd give that a try. So let's take it apart and see what happens. Kaboom! No, hopefully not that. First thing I had to do was remove, I think, about 14 screws. There's an outer ring of screws and then four screws on the inside that hold the amplifier plate to the back. Now, I did this wrong. There is so little slack. Whoever put this together put so little wire in there. I, there's a cables that attach the speaker and there's cables that attach uh, the front LED, but it was sort of really glued, sort of stuck in. I'm, I, I ended up you know, actually yanking the LED cable and the ne negative speaker wire out because there were just so little cable available and uh, ended up using the selfie cam on my phone just to see what the situation was in there, but they're just sort of push on connectors on the speaker. Once you get the amplifier module separated, you've got to get this black plastic piece off the back, which again, you're at the mercy of glue and very short wires. This was sort of glued on and you can kind of get that loose. Then there's another plug over here that this is very short also. So I gotta reach in there with a pair of tweezers and unplug that and I think the case will come off. There's just not a lot of slack. Is that hardwired in? I guess it is. At least I finally made my way to the circuit. Okay, well, there we are. In addition to all these screws, this board is glued in. Like every jack is glued in. So you kinda have to very carefully work that back. It's gonna be hard with this speaker thing. There's a low frequency effects jack. Just kind of took out a screwdriver and scraped all this glue away. So you can get this real stringy there. I guess it has to be glued. Otherwise the subwoofer might shake some stuff loose. I don't know, I'm assuming that's why they did it that way. Okay, so this is obviously where you connect all your connectors. Unfortunately, that's messed up, but I used the low frequency effects connector. And uh, what's interesting about this problem is it doesn't seem to work. It just seems to like pop and crackle. And this thing, from what I read online, is a limiter board that helps the subwoofer prevent itself from being overdriven. And this can be bypassed. So basically, I just need to like take that limiter board off. It's like an appendix. It's not really needed if you're careful not to overdrive your subwoofer. So I'm just going to set up a temporary thing. The next thing I did was temporarily extend all the cables so I could work on it with the case open. So I've got a signal coming in. I'm getting no subwoofer beats out of this thing. I got think crackles and pops. And this is the preamp board. I wouldn't want to touch down there because, you know, that's not safe, but I could kind of... Almost like a signal's not getting in. But even if I disconnect the input, I'm still getting crackling out of the speaker. So, still hear that. So, I may just try this uh, limiter bypass and see if that works, because I, I don't really know what else I can do. There's a little blackening down here on the amp, but it, it obviously can amplify stuff, because it's making the speaker make noise. So now, so I got that board out, so now all I've got to do is cut this connector off, and then up here, where it was, where this thing had plugged in, I've got to bypass this board and connect these wires directly to that board. We'll see if that makes a difference. Okay, so now the appendectomy is complete. I've connected all the black wires and left the white wire loose as described on the internet the limiter board has been removed I'm about to fire this thing back up and see if we get anything I've got a signal connected to it so we should hear some thumping or an explosion or something here goes nothing at least we're not getting the clicking oh, I need to make sure that the speaker's still hooked up I think it's working. I just gotta turn it up without making these things touch each other. Go turn on my stereo a little bit. 
which is in the other room. It's working. Now the question is, can I put all this stuff back together? I don't know. So the subwoofer is back in place after removing this. I'm gonna power on the radio, see if we get anything. So that's it, the subwoofer is back in place and it's working again and we tested it out with some surround sound on DTS movies, it seems to be working fine. I don't know what the long term effects, if any, of removing that limiter circuit, I guess as long as I don't just blast it, it'll be okay. And uh, maybe I got a little bit more life out of the subwoofer. But anyway, that's about it. We'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye.